uh, I am Pratipa, Assistant Professor from the Department of Biomedical Engineering. So now you are going to see about some basic introduction and basic classification of biomaterials. Okay. So first of all, what is mean by biomaterial? So in the name itself, we can guess. So biomaterial is a material. So that may be a synthetic or natural. Okay. So that can be used in medical application to perform a body function or replace a body part or tissue. Okay. So the biomaterial is generally so it is intended to interact at the interface of biological system. Okay. So it may be a can be used as a drug delivery system for drug or biological factors. Okay. So these biomaterials. So the main characteristics it should possess is so the biocompatibility. So the biomaterial is going to inter interact with the biological system. So the term biocompatibility is a very very important one. Okay. So let us see the examples of biomaterials. So the biomaterials. So you are using the terms the artificial hot walls or contact lenses or hernia mesh. A skin graft or cochlear implants. So these are only the some examples of biomaterials. Okay. So the hip replacement or the plates that you are going to use to support the bone to grow. So these are all some examples of the biomaterial. So nowadays the biomaterial has an or plays an important role in the category of bioengineering. Okay. So. So we can define the biomaterial as a substance that is used to replace, regenerate, repair, or improve body parts. So that is tissue or organ in term of structure or function. Okay. So these biomaterials are generally classified into three types. So that is a metal, ceramics, and polymers. Okay. So now let us see about the metallic implants. Okay. So the metallic implants. So there are many types of metals that can be used as a biomaterial. Okay. So the widely metals are used for the main purpose is its mechanical properties. Okay. So these biomaterials or the metallic biomaterials or the substitute for the organ or some structure. So where the load bearing is a very very important one. Okay. So such as uh, total hip and knee prostheses or fracture healing aids as bone plates pins and screws and plates and then spinal fixation wire or dental implants so if you see so the hip or knee in prosthesis so there the weight bearing or load bearing capacity should be more okay so in that place you are using a metallic implants or metals as a biomaterial okay so let us see so some metal some active roles okay so where these metallic implant is a very important place is artificial heart walls or vascular stent or the pacemaker leads or catheter guide wires and cochlear implants so these are all the other examples okay so these metallic implants or are classified into three groups okay so there are may, many metals are available in the market but they are using mainly three metals as a biomaterials okay so those three metals are iron based stainless steel or cobalt based alloys and pure titanium and titanium alloys okay so in this category these titanium alloys has more preference and more application in this field okay so we are using iron based stainless steel and cobalt based alloys but more than that the titanium has more important role in the field of biomaterials okay so if you see so these are all the properties of metallic implants okay so the stainless steel chromium or cobalt chromium alloys and titanium and titanium alloys has some range of hardness and elongation and fracture toughness so if you see the hardness the stainless steel has 350 uh, range and cobalt chromium alloy has 240 range and titanium has 310 to 350 so let you see 
so the stainless steel the more hardest one and then the titanium and then cobalt chromium alloys so based upon the application or where the biomaterials are used and the properties needed you can use any type of these metals okay so let us see in detail about the uh, these metals okay so if you see so alloys so what is mean by alloys so alloys are the addition of some material or am um, some metals to the particular metal to alter its mechanical property or its thermal property so that is known as alloys okay so the silver steels and cobalt has many kind of alloys so in this alloy you are going to add chromium okay so the chromium is mainly added to resist the corrosion okay so what is mean by corrosion so the corrosion is the main problem in the metals okay so if you keep any metal so it will corrode easily so that is it will react with the oxygen and it will become some outer layer is formed so that layer is known as corrosion okay so mainly in home appliances also we are facing these issues so after some long time use so if the uh, metals become corrode so so it will cause some side effects or it will cause some problems okay likewise so these biomaterials are going to fix inside our body so if the corrosion happens so it cause some infection or inflammation inside our body so the mainly the chromium are added to the alloy to resist the corrosion okay and then if you as i said earlier the titanium has many importance and many advantages over these two alloys that is cobalt chromium and stainless steel okay so the titanium the most and foremost and first advantages is that so it doesn't need any alloy or any addition of chromium to resist the corrosion okay so hence it is a corrosion resistance one okay so naturally the titanium is a corrosion resistant so it doesn't need any materials to be added or alloyed to increase its resistance towards the corrosion okay so it is a main advantage of titanium okay so the major advantage of certain metal and alloy for biomedical applications are their bio compatibility and their mechanical property and the cost is a reasonable one so for these advantages we are using the these three metals okay for biomaterials okay so first we see in detail about the stainless steel okay so the metals like iron chromium cobalt nickel titanium and niobium molybdenum can be tolerated in minute amount in the blood okay so because the metal has a property of leaching okay so leaching means it releases some amount of chemical things okay so that is known as leaching so which leads to corrosion poisoning and weakening of the implant okay so these are the some disadvantage of metals okay so to improve these or to resist these above uh, disadvantages you are going to alloy that is you are going to improve the properties of metallic materials okay so the stainless steels are alloyed alloys of iron okay so these are the things it is generally known to everyone so that is stainless steel means so it is one of the alloy of iron okay so the carbon content is very very low so that is less than 0.2 weight okay so and then stainless steel have a significant amount of chromium so it has chromium up to 17 to 20 percentage okay so the composition of stainless steel is iron chromium nickel molybdenum and carbon okay so let us see the percentages so it is a very important one so the alloy means so it has certain percentage of certain metals okay so likewise so stainless steel has iron content of 62.97 percentage and chromium of 18 percentage and nickel of 16 percentage and molybdenum of 
थ्री परसेंटेज एंड कार्बन ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री परसेंटेज ओके सो वी नो सो वाई द क्रोमियम इज एडर सो इट इज एडर टू इम्प्रूव द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ करोशन ओके सो लाइक वाइज सो सी सो द एडिशन ऑफ क्रोमियम रिजल्ट इन करोजन रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ स्टील ओके सो इन द प्रसेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दिस ऑक्साइड फिल्म फॉर्म्स एंड हिल्स इट सेल्फ ओके सो इट हैज अ स्मॉल परसेंटेज ऑफ मॉलिपडिनम सो द यूज ऑफ मॉलिपडिनम इज टू रेजिस्ट द पिटिंग करोशन सो पिटिंग करोशन इज अ टाइप ऑफ करोशन वैर सो द करोशन हैपन्स इन द जॉइंट्स ओके इट इज प्रॉपरली नोन एज थ्री थ्री वन सिक्स स्टेनलेस स्टील दिस करोशन इज वेरी वेरी कॉमन सो टू रेजिस्ट दिस करोशन द मॉलिपडिनम इज एड ओके so three digit designation so we are telling थ्री वन सिक्स एल स्टेनलेस स्टील ओके सो दिस थ्री डेसिग्नेशन करस्पॉन्ड्स टू दट इज थ्री वन सिक्स सो दिस थ्री नंबर्स करस्पॉन्ड्स टू अमेरिकन आई एम एंड स्टील इंस्टिट्यूट ओके सो दट इज थ्री हंड्रेड मीन्स इट इज अ सीरियज ऑफ एस्थेटिक ओके एस्थेटिक स्ट्रक्चर इट इज थ्री हंड्रेड सीरियस सो इफ इट इज फोर हंड्रेड सीरियस so it is a ferrite or martensic stainless steel okay so the our 316 stainless steel is a 300 series so it is asthenic type okay the letter l indicates that it has very low carbon content than other okay so we are indicating l so 316 l is the indication of our stainless steel alloys so we can think why the carbon content must be low okay so the main reason for the low content of carbon is so if the carbon is of limited percentage more than of limited percentage the formation of carbides will happen okay so this carbides will form some grain brownies and the steels are sensitized that is weakened so the carbon content should be very very low so if you take any material the carbon content should be of lower one okay so the formation of grain boundary carbides can results in the depletion of chromium in the region adjacent to the grain boundary and also reduce the formation of the productive chromium oxide okay so mainly the carbon content will form some layer so that layer will reduce the action of chromium okay so the carbon content should be very very low so therefore the steels are prone to failure through corrosion assisted fracture of the synthesized regions okay so so in stainless steel we are having what are the content please remember so the contents are chromium nickel molybdenum and then iron and so on so in this the chromium is mainly used for resistance that is corrosion resistance so next one is main thing is nickel so nickel is added to stabilize the stronger asthetic phase okay so it is added to stabilize the asthetic phase so the american society of testing and material designates this steel as f138 bar 139 okay so the 316 l is a single phase asthetic alloy and should not have ferrite or carbide phases so the 316 l is vacuum melted and this special production method improves the pitting corrosion resistance and provides a ferrite free microstructure so this type of asthetic stainless steel is non magnetic and can be hardened by heat treatment okay so 316l is used in the cold work condition with markedly increasing yield ultimately tensile and fatic strength relative to unyielded state okay so the mechanical properties of stainless steel are they are ferromagnetic and have high hardness so thus they are ideally suited for dental and surgical instruments so the stainless steels are mostly suited for 
Dental and surgical instruments like dental burns, dental scissors or orthodontic pillars and scalpels, bone cutes and then scissors and gorges etc. Okay, the stainless steel may also corrode inside the body under highly stressed and oxygen depleted region such as the contacts under the screw of a bone fracture plate. Okay, so the mainly they are used to win the load bearing sites. Okay, so bone fracture plates and all the mainly used we are using stainless steels. So these stainless steel also used for temporary implant application. So that is the bone screws and plates are the temporary implants. So it is not lasting inside our body for a longer time. So if you make the bone plates and then you can remove the bone plates and rods. Okay. So the corrosion resistant, wear resistance and fatic strength of the alloy is improved by its surface modification methods. Okay. So such as anodization, passivation and ion implantation. So other stainless steel such as nitrogen strengthened alloy which have better corrosion resistance and mechanical properties than 316L. So if you see, so these are, are the some varieties of stainless steel. Okay. So the first one is F1314. So it was the first nitrogen strengthened stainless steel developed for fraction fixation application. Okay, so the next one is F229 is essentially a nickel free alloy. So it doesn't have any nickel. So it is a nickel allergy problems. So some materials or some implants so which should be of nickel allergy. So that type of places we are using F229 which is a nickel free alloy. Okay, so and then ASTM F1586 that has been used for bone screws and plates and spinal fixation components okay so if you see so these are all the bone plates okay so these are all the screws so these are some type of or some of the application of our stainless steel alloys so already we have seen in detail about the stainless steel okay so next we are going to see about the cobalt based alloys. So these are materials that is referred to as cobalt chromium alloys. That is CO based alloys is mainly we are using cobalt chromium alloy. Okay. So the main application of these alloys is dentistry. Okay. So the cobalt forms a solid solution with chromium up to 35% chromium addition which enhances the corrosion resistance so in previous in stainless steel also we have seen that the chromium is added for alloying the main reason is the corrosion resistance okay so similarly in cobalt based alloys also we are adding chromium for the purpose of corrosion resistance okay so in this the molybdenum is also added for higher strength okay so the there are many phases of alloying okay so that is we have going to see some terms so that is alloying casting and rotting okay so the alloying is nothing but you are going to combine any two or more metals to give greater strength or resistance to corrosion okay so as already i said the alloying is mainly uh, done to improve the properties of certain material okay so next one is casting so we all know what is mean by casting okay so the casting is nothing but uh, a mold so in casting a mold is a very very important one okay so the casting is you are going to make the material to the desired shape okay so in this the mold is first the mold is prepared and then the melted metal or the melted ceramics or anything so these are poured inside the mold and then these are allowed to cool for some times to solid to reach its solid state okay so after it reaches the solid state the mold is take the metals are taken out of the mold so you can get the desired shape okay so this is casting okay so next one is rafting so rafting is nothing but the shaping the metals 
by using some tools okay so the tools may be hammers or some tools by using some tools you are going to shape the metal okay so it may be annealing so annealing means so it is a heating so heating you are going to heat the metal to some above the some normal temperature and then you are going to shape the metal to the desired shape and then you are going allowed to cool slowly okay so the main reason for annealing is so it softens the metal okay and then it improves some tensile strength of the particular metal so it is a main use of annealing process okay so now you, you are having some idea about alloying casting rafting and annealing okay so next you can see the composition of uh, cobalt chromium alloy so the main major composition is so the major elements are cobalt and chromium and nickel so in this you can you know so the use of chromium is that is used for so in this mainly cobalt and chromium and then nickel are the main part of this composition so that is known as major elements okay so it should be of 90 percentage by weight and then minor elements so the minor elements are 10 percentage by weight so that is molybdenum silicon and manganese and then carbon okay so the molybdenum is of 3 to 6 percentage and then carbon so the we already seen that carbon content should be very very low so that is of 0.2 percentage by weight okay so these are basically of two types okay there are two types of cobalt chromium alloy that is cobalt chromium and molybdenum alloy so which is usually casted okay so the next type is cobalt nickel chromium and molybdenum alloy so which is rotted okay so we already seen what is mean by casting and what is mean by rafting okay so the first one is cobalt chromium and molybdenum alloy is mainly used in dental industries and artificial joints okay so and then cobalt nickel chromium and molybdenum alloys are used in fabrication of stems of heavily loaded joints such as femoral hip systems okay so the heavily used one is femoral hip system so the properties so the properties are it should have high mechanical properties and then high n modulus that good corrosion resistance and then bio compatibility and good wear resistance in cobalt chromium and molybdenum alloy high fatic resistance and then high density okay so these are all the main properties possessed by the cobalt chromium alloys okay so next one types and composition of cobalt based alloys so we have already seen the main two types so but other than that the cobalt chromium alloys are of four types okay so that is by uh, we can we are classify by the methods that is casting or rafting okay so the first one is cast cobalt chromium molybdenum alloy so that is f75 and then next one is rod cobalt chromium and then vanadium nickel alloy so that is f90 and then cobalt nickel chromium molybdenum alloy that is f562 and then rod cobalt nickel chromium molybdenum and then wfe alloy that is f563 okay so these are all the main four types of cobalt based alloys so let us see the mechanical and chemical composition okay so it is cast into the first one is ASTM F75 alloy. So the uses and the application of these alloys are. So it can be cast into various shape by inversely casting. By using the casting, it can be casted into various shape. Okay. So basically, the alloy is melted. So how you are going to cast? So that is the first process is you are going to melt the alloy. Okay, and then pour them into the ceramic mold. Okay, so the mold is nothing but our desired shape. Okay, so you are melting and then you are going to pour the metal into the mold. Okay, so and then 
the mold is obtained by how you are obtaining the mold is you are obtained by coating the wax model of the required shape by ceramic mold material and then melting the wax so the process is called last wax process okay so next the metal of metal casting in which a molten metal is poured into the mold and has been created by means of wax model okay so the casting process can result in non equilibrium cooling leading to a variation in composition large grain size and then astm f99 alloy so the f99 alloy which is a modified f75 alloy is mechanically processed by hot fogging at 800 degrees celsius after casting okay so this is a modification of f75 okay so the how it was processed is you are going to hot fog at 800 degrees celsius after casting okay so the hot fogging a metal is worked to a predetermined shape by one or more process so that is uh, in hot fogging you are having some process so that is first one is hammering and then upsetting and then pressing and so forth okay so when the work piece is heated up to 75 percentage of its melting temperature okay so this results in the doubling of the fatic yield and ultimate strength of the alloy compared to as cast f75 alloy so due to these processing so f s t m f799 alloy so it has the ultimate strength okay so f is called thermomechanical alloy and has minor variation in proportion to that of f75 okay so and then next method you are using is powder metallurgical techniques okay so these are avoid used to avoid casting problem to improve the mechanical property so the casting is some of the problem okay so to overcome these problems in the casting we are going for the other method that is powder metallurgical techniques okay so the f75 alloy the powder is compacted and sintered simultaneously by hot isotactic pressing so this results in a much finer grain and also very uniform destruction of carbides okay so thus hip f75 alloy has better mechanical property than the cast equivalent so the next one is astm f90 alloy okay so this alloy is or rotted alloy okay so we have seen that is casted alloy and rotted alloy in that category astm f90 is a rotted alloy oh it has tungsten and nickel elements okay so mainly these elements are added to improve its uh, mechanicality and fabrication okay so the mechanical properties of the annealed alloy is similar to that of f75 so this alloy has its mechanical property so that is similar to f75 alloy okay so but on cold working so its property doubled more than that of f799 alloy if you work these alloy under cold condition so the property will be doubled okay so the cold working means so it refers to the process of strengthening metal by changing its shape without the use of heat okay so we are employed heat in annealing or rafting anything else we are going to employ the heat or use the heat but in the cold working you instead of heat you are using the cold okay so that is you are going to uh, brought the temperature below the normal tem- temperature okay so above the normal temperature so it is annealing so below the normal temperature so that is a cold working okay so subjecting the metal to this mechanical stress was a permanent change to the metal's crystalline structure causing an increase in strength so the cold working causes or some changes in the crystalline structure of the 
particular metal okay so it gives a permanent change to metal crystalline structure so it increases the strength okay so the next one is ASTM F6 562 alloy so it is originally called as MP351 so it is a rotted alloy and contains significant amount of nickel and relatively higher amount of molybdenum okay so the composition of this alloy is approximately 35 percentage of cobalt and nickel so that is followed by a significant amount of chromium and molybdenum elements okay so that is mp so that indicates multiphasic nature of alloy so that is formed by thermal treatments and fogging to improve its mechanical property so that is it has a multiple phases so the type of alloy is known as multiphasic alloy so that is multiphasic in nature okay so the superior fatic and ultimate tensile strength of the rod 562 alloy also make it stronger among the metallic metals okay so that is available for implants so the the M example of application of these metal alloys are so it is used in long service without failure such as hip joint stems okay so mostly they are used in hip joint stems so the we, you are going to see the advantages and disadvantages okay so the main advantage is that so it is tend to be corrosion resistance and which reduces complication with the surrounding tissue when implanted okay so the first advantage is corrosion resistance then second one is chemically inert okay so due to this inert uh, inertion so it minimizes the possibility of irritation allergic reaction and immune response okay so the next advantage is because of its hardness and resistance to corrosion it mostly preferred in medical application so the name advantage hardness and resistance to corrosion okay so the disadvantages is the metals are released from copper chromium alloy tools and prosthetics may cause allergic reaction and skin eczema okay so the prosthetic or any medical equipment with high nickel most percentage of cobalt chromium should be avoided due to low biocompatibility so it has low biocompatibility so these are the two main disadvantages of cobalt chromium alloys okay so next the application so the first medical application so that is artificial joints including he, knee and hip joints okay so next manufacture of stent and other surgical implants so next one is the main dental prosthetics okay so that is the fabrication of metallic frameworks of removable partial dentures and the nickel and chromium based alloys are widely used in prosthetic dentistry for grown and rich complications and then metallic substructures for the fabrication of proline you fused to do metal restoration and implant frameworks okay so it has main application in the field of dental next we are going to say about titanium and titanium based alloys okay so the first point so that is the main advantage of titanium alloys is we have already told that so it is a corrosion resistant so it has its own corrosion resistant property okay so it has a low specific gravity and excellent biocompatibility which is the main future the biomaterial should have okay so the formation of a stable thin coherent thin titanium oxide on the surface of the titanium and its alloys provides superior corrosion resistance compared with stainless steel and cobalt chromium alloys okay so the main advantage of titanium alloys is it has a very good resistance that is corrosion resistance okay so the composition of titanium alloys are so it has an aluminium vanadium ion oxygen and titanium remainder portion so that is aluminium of 6 percentage vanadium 4 percentage and iron of 0.25 percentage and oxygen 0.2 percentage okay so remaining quantity it is a titanium one 
so the next one the properties of pure titanium so that is cptn means so this is pure titanium without any alloying the pure the titanium is known as pure titanium okay so it is essentially or has a alpha phase and is well known for not causing energy any allergic reaction okay so the oxygen content which affects the ductility and strength of cptn that is pure titanium so there are four grades of pure titanium so that is based on the oxygen content okay so based on the oxygen content the titanium is classified into four grades okay so the higher impurity content leads to higher strength but reduces the ductility of pure titanium okay so the mechanical properties of titanium are the pure titanium has low strength and then improved strength can be achieved by alloying so titanium is stronger than aluminium and weaker than steel okay so the high strength to weight ratio then alpha titanium has reasonable ductility and beta titanium allows uh, also has heavier and less ductile so it has moderate density moderate tensile strength and high melting point okay so the unalloyed that is a pure titanium applications are so it is used in the pacemaker cases and housing for ventricular assisted devices and implantable infusion drug pumps screws and staples for final surgery and dental implants and maxillofacial and craniofacial implants so this maxillofacial implants means so nothing but you are going that uh, to alter the shape of our teeth okay so teeth geometry so if you alter the shape of the teeth geometry the shape of your face will alter okay so that type of surgeries are known as maxillofacial surgeries okay so these titanium are used in that areas so alloying aluminium so in alloy you having a aluminium so the use of aluminium is so it precipitates hardening okay and then it stabilizes the alpha stage so the addition of vanadium stabilizes beta stage okay and then controls the amount of beta stabilizers so the alloy that is titanium aluminium and vanadium alloy alloy has the two phases that is alpha and beta phase because the aluminium stabilizes alpha state and vanadium stabilizes beta state so this alloy contains both aluminium and vanadium so it has a two phases that is alpha and beta okay and can be strengthened to 30 to 50 percentage more for solution treatment and aging than the annealed condition okay so the so the main point that is in comparison with the elastic moduli of either stainless steel or copper chromium alloy titanium and titanium alloy have lower moduli okay so it exhibit excellent biocompatibility thus beta alloys offer enhanced biocompatibility with reduced elastic moduli so the main alloy which has no elastic moduli is titanium niobium and zirconium ta alloys okay so it has a very low elastic moduli among all the metallic implants used so uh, we have so far we have seen about the basic biomaterials so that is uh, we have seen about the metal okay mainly metals that is used as a biomaterials okay thank you thank you for listening